I would like to see a clear cut between top three and the rest uh, coming to Summer Split because I want to send the strongest teams to Worlds. Mm -hmm. But I can understand that it can be a bit, like, I don't know, annoying uh, as a viewer to only see the same teams succeed. Hi everyone, it's Tom reporting from the LEC Spring Split. With me it is Laure Vallée, the post-game interviewer of the LEC, who is now in Berlin, so she can do work from the studio uh, for the playoffs. How are you doing, Laure? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I've been waiting for so long to go back to Berlin. Uh, funny thing is, they announced a new lockdown one day before I was supposed to leave. So oh <laughs> I was so scared that I would, yeah, would be stuck in France. But yeah, I'm here. I'm all right. I just need to take a PCR test uh, because there's a quarantine mm. uh, right now in Germany. But yeah, I should be good to be in the studio this weekend. Yeah, you've done all your work so far this split from the studio in France, right? With the yeah, uh, yeah. From the LFL studio, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah, um, from the OTP broadcast. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how uh, was... was... uh, sorry, go, okay. go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they, um, uh, I mean, I, I needed to find a solution for me to broadcast in a good way. Uh, mm -hmm. So they actually suggested to give me a part of the studio. So they, they, they ordered a backdrop, mics and everything. And yeah, Riot liked this setter, setup better than if I was staying at home. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a nice way to do it, even though we had delays. But I mean, it's, that's life. Yeah, I and still, I still had some content, so that's good. How was it for you to work from there? Obviously, you're gonna miss the people here in the studio, but did you still feel like you were able to do your work to like the normal potential? Uh, normal, normal is an interesting word these days. You know, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's just yeah, no, having getting used to this strange setup. I mean. Uh, mostly I tried to adapt to the fact that I was in France, therefore I had like a two seconds delay between Berlin and France. Mm. So yeah, uh, week after week I tried to adapt, uh, whether it was with my flow, my questions, my energy levels to just match the players and try to make the viewers forget that I was not in Berlin and that I, yeah, I was working from home. But um, yeah, I think it went decent, I guess, but mm. yeah, uh, I'm so looking forward to seeing the players again this weekend. Yeah, is that something you find that motivates you extra when you know that even though you're probably not going to be um, seeing them a lot directly because of the restrictions, but still you're going to be <laughs> in the same building and, and, and with the yeah. other production members, does it give you a lot of extra energy and maybe even some motivation? I think so many people have found a loss of motivation in these circumstances, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially for me, because even though I was with the guys in France, I was not hanging out with them because I had mm. to follow the English stream. So I was basically like six hours a day in a little room with my in-ear like this, just <laughs> listening to the English feed, not interacting with the guys. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just having these social interactions that I really missed uh, is going to help a lot, especially uh, maintaining energy levels uh, throughout the whole day. Uh, but also, I mean, I know that I won't be seeing the players so much, but just being face-to-face, -face, seeing their emotions, like just, I, mean, I don't know, standing in the crowd and watch them play and mm -hmm. like watch them react to every play. It's this tiny bits that I miss. And I, I feel, I, you may feel the same as a journalist, like this genuine and uh, interaction. It's very that difficult. You get. It's, it's so yeah, weird yeah. to not speak with people. I think the last interview I did um, in person was with Anna from Rogue in their office. Mm -hmm. um, and then after, which was in August, I think. And then ever, ever since it's been uh, all, all remote. <laughs> but um, talking about you and working with the LEC, obviously there's, um, we saw a lot of new and returning faces coming to the LEC. And mm -hmm. I'm interested hearing your perspective on who do you like so far from the newbies or the returning faces and who do you enjoy talking to a lot? Players, you mean? It's so hard answering this question because mm -hmm. I, I like the players a lot. And something that I often said this split is that um, I don't know if you had the same feeling, but usually when you have rookies showing up, they're usually, usually shy, mm. uh, don't speak too much. But I mean, we had like uh, Trimby, the likes of Zanzara and players like this who are so hungry uh, <laughs> from the get go. And yeah, and they give you this energy and you can feel that they just want to succeed. So I, 
Okay, biased French side. Uh, I would say, say Mateo. That I'm very, yeah, Mateo <laughs> and Jose joined the league. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, I enjoy talking to every rookie, every player rejoining the league so far. Uh, mm -hmm. It's so hard to pick a favorite, honestly. They've been great. All yeah. of them. But for for you, you say obviously uh, rookies, you, they might be a bit nervous. Is that something you've noticed mm -hmm. in your years of experience as being the post game interviewer? That for that first interview, maybe you need to warm them up a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. Usually you need to warm them up a little. And uh, something that I was missing, especially with the online setup, is this warm up phase because I usually can't talk to them before the interview. Like mm -hmm. we go live, and that's the first moment I see them. Whereas when we were in the studio uh, with the waiting screen and everything, I could just yeah chat, uh, joke with them. So I'm glad that we had the new batch of rookie who were, I, I don't know, PR ready or just like, uh, I don't know, hungry enough to show their true self uh, mm. because it's been helping me a lot with my work for sure. Yeah. And overall, doing the interviews, obviously, we saw you, I think, in six of the eight weeks you did your uh, post-game mm -hmm. post interviews. Yeah. When, when you do these interviews so often in a post-game and many games are going to be the same, how do you, for yourself, try to keep every interview diverse and how do you obviously there are so many tropes that interviewers default will default to is like oh yeah. um why did you pick x or why did you pick z or something so for you how do you maintain that diversity in your interviews um i usually am um, when i build my interview i think about the interview um i mean i think about the guest first like uh mm -hmm. Often people will ask me, how do you choose the questions? How do you choose the guests? Usually I wait for the uh, like 15 minute mark in game and I look at what the game gives me. If the game is great, then I will focus on the game and then I will, I will choose a player who had a good performance. Mm -hmm. uh, if the game doesn't give me too much, then I will maybe go back to storytelling or if I have like an important story I want to tell. It, it really depends, honestly, like the story of the day, what we want to highlight on the broadcast as mm -hmm. well, because I'm not uh, making decisions alone. Usually I pitch an idea. And uh, Evan, the scriptwriter, he, he, we, we talk a lot during mm -hmm. show days and he's great for giving me inputs on the directions I should take. But yeah, usually it's either game, storytelling, but um, it's, I, I don't have a system because mm -hmm. it, I usually decide in the moment. Like if I feel that for this game, the important story is, uh, I don't know, Odo Amne facing his old team, then I will talk to Odo Amne facing his old team. Mm -hmm. uh, if I feel like uh, Trimby had an amazing game and mm -hmm. he was, I don't know, uh, not feeling great about his late, uh, latest performances, then I will focus on Trimby and his improvements. It, honestly, it's, it's hard to find a system because I usually adapt uh, depending on what the, they gave me. Mm -hmm. And has that been something that has been affected by working remotely and during pandemic or have you found that to still be intact mm, it didn't change much uh, mm -hmm. on my approach i used to do things the same way when i was in the studio more scripted back then because mm -hmm. i didn't trust myself and i needed to script everything uh something that i got away from now so yeah i, I think that i got more confident through the online setup actually and oh interesting i don't know yeah working through yeah. webcam uh, players being less shy also online. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. It's a mix of a lot of things and it allowed me to just explore more. I, I think I started to flame the players a bit more maybe this year. <laughs> I don't know them now. You were critical a few <laughs> times, which I love. I love to see. I mean, you, you got to be critical. I mean, if, if a player wins a game, in my opinion, you say, hey, you won them the game. If they lose the game, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the way it is. It's, you can't have it uh, one way. So, um, Great. I also want to talk to you, obviously, about the split itself, because uh, I know you love following the team's developments and um, how they grow over the course of a split and, and, and um, the shifts of the meta, the picks they play, the, the particular style. So in general, how do you feel about the LSE's performance in the regular split um, the past mm. eight weeks? It's strange because we had like insane results. But when I think about the level of the LUC this year, I feel like it's inferior to last year in mm -hmm. a way. I know that G2 performed better than last year, Rogue performed better than last year, but still, 
I don't know if it's due to best of one or teams like getting used to playing online, but um, we saw more sloppy games, uh, teams having a really hard time adapting to the meta, try, finding their style, their mm -hmm. fit. Uh, we saw the fall of XL, we saw the fall of uh, Schalke for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm hoping... I'm hoping that summer will be different and maybe players going back to the studio will change that. But um, yeah, overall, I'm. there's no surprise in the standings when you look at the playoffs, for instance. But still, I feel like the road... I think uh, Fnatic is, being fifth there... might be a bit of a surprise, but... Uh... Yeah, it, yes <laughs> and no, actually. Like, okay. <laughs> uh, we, we, we did a ranking with the guys uh, before the beginning of the split and we actually didn't rank Fnatic that high. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay. um, yeah, it, it's just... Teams, I feel like teams had a harder time adjusting to a lot of things. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the overall mood, COVID and everything, like being annoying to everyone or just the game as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I feel like LEC is less strong than last year, mm -hmm. which and is boring for MSI. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's fair to compare it maybe not to the summer split because that's when all the teams were already like in, yeah. in, in their full mojo. But if you compare it to last year's spring split, is that also then a downgrade? You say you would say in the level of play this year mm, from last spring? No, because when you look at Rogue, for instance, last spring and where where they were, like uh, uh, to me, Rogue is the exception to all this because it, it, you can feel like it's been a very long process for them, like uh, y y years and years of work since mm. they joined the LEC to get there. So outside of Rogue, I feel like. Most of the teams either regressed or uh, got stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, you you said it before, right? It, it it turned out to be a very close split. With um, when you look at the standings in the end, maybe not too many surprises, but mm -hmm. overall, up until the final weekend, once again, it was incredibly tense, and everybody was just having all the possibilities. We once yeah. again had this insane foldy sheet with all the outcomes that would po would be possible. Yeah. Um, that's one of the only good sides, I want to say, of uh, playing best of ones. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I guess that that leaves it open to be more crazy than when you yeah. uh, can have these teams perform more consistently or, or in, in like a best of three setting or a best of two, which I think um, some... Nice. Yeah, yeah. They don't like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's ideal either. But when you then evaluate the LEC, do you think that these teams being close at the moment is something that we can build on that maybe in summer they all progress together or would you rather have some clear teams that are better like for example obviously last year we also had origin mm -hmm. in spring who was also performing pretty well um we saw the surge of mad lions already who are now also doing still pretty well but only one win ahead of the likes of Schalke and um fanatic and and stuff like this uh, it depends on what you want as a viewer, actually, because thinking about summer, you really want to have this top three who will look stronger than the rest because mm -hmm. that's the teams you want to send to Worlds. I mean, maybe four teams, whatever. But um, uh, maybe some view. I, I know some viewers got bored uh, of the fact that it was only G2, 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 and maybe Fnatic sometimes challenging them. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, for, for me, I would like to see a clear cut between top three and the rest uh, coming to Summer Split because I want to send the strongest teams to Worlds. Mm -hmm. But I can understand that it can be a bit, like, I don't know, annoying uh, as a viewer to only see the same teams succeed. Yeah. And yeah, and even for these teams, like when you don't get challenged in the LEC, then you just sort of show up at Worlds and you get dumpstered because you didn't get the necessary training. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I don't. I don't expect to see all the teams grow uh, for summer. Like vitality is going to be complicated for them. Misfits can do better. Excel, I don't know. Astralis, I don't know either. So yeah, I, I kind of expect to see a top three being more clear mm -hmm. than uh, all the teams getting to the same level. Yeah. Now, uh, finally, I, I do want to talk about some teams in particular. You already mentioned mm -hmm. Rogue, and I think G two is. I don't know, not many people are surprised that they are at the top where they are now, but something you mentioned is that you didn't rank Fnatic very highly in um, the beginning of the split or coming into the split. So first of all, why did you think that they were uh, not going to perform so well? And also, how do you feel about them not performing so well? Because they are this uh, Legacy Kings, Dynasty, Quickshot, now it's all, uh, all yeah, the terms. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all this stuff. Yeah. Um, I think it's something we... 
we saw on social media the fact that they had a lot of personalities to work to make work together. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that maybe, I don't know, Reckless brought some leadership to the team and uh, I don't know, um, contain the int sometimes okay. uh, if mm -hmm. i'm saying uh, yeah I, I don't know maybe they're more of a free spirit now that they reckless is gone i i don't want to i don't want to tie it down to reckless honestly because i don't even think it's linked to that mm -hmm. but it's just that they it's a new team full of individualities that had to work together niski was back from an a uh, upset joined the team it's just that it, it takes it takes time to make everything work mm -hmm. and on this side i'm glad that they had yamato as a coach because you couldn't think of anyone better to just bring this group together <laughs> as it's, it's just glue who is like this uh yeah. this guru almost who's like no guys yeah. we, we need to be calm it's and... so inspiring it's insane <laughs> and yeah uh, and when it comes to them not performing as good Yet again, let's wait for best of fives. Uh, this is a team that can perform, perform better in best of fives. I feel like every player within the team found its role. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't wait for this weekend, honestly. But yeah, them not being so successful in spring is not a surprise, I feel. Mm -hmm. And I expect them to be stronger in summer, for instance. Yeah, so you're not too worried about their progress as a team in the league and them climbing back towards being the top no. contender. Because to talking to Niski, I mean, we, we talk a lot backstage and mm -hmm. he often tells me that they try a lot of stuff, even on stage. And the fact that they're a team that's not afraid to try stuff on stage, even mm -hmm. though it doesn't uh, it doesn't translate to a win every time, says a lot because it shows that they trust each other enough to, uh, I don't know, go for these clutch moments, whereas some teams would maybe play scared and uh, yeah, just... Mm -hmm. I don't know, try to follow what they learned in scrims. And I feel like Sandy, uh, yeah, gets enough from their scrim training to just try everything they want on stage afterwards. Yeah. Now, the second team I also want to discuss is SK mm -hmm. Gaming because they are a team, I think, that surprised many people when for, I think, for a few weeks, they were like in the top four, um, having an insane score. And obviously, you also mm -hmm. already um, mentioned uh, Jezu, or the Viva La France, um, but there's a, there's a team with five players from five different teams coming together and also performing uh, much better than everybody expected. So how, how, what's your perspective on them at the moment? Mm, SK. SK. SK is a great team. SK has <laughs> great players, and I, I don't know, it's this... They, they give me like Vitality 2018 vibes, but not in the sense of the rugby style that they have, but mm -hmm. just the fact that they're uh, young players who've been waiting so long to prove themselves. I, I think about Tings. Tings has been hard, stu hard stuck League 2 for like <laughs> years. And he was, he was waiting for this opportunity. So uh, Treats, you, you can feel the same thing. Like he became instrumental for this team. Genax, he... I don't know. I, I feel like I, I'm seeing a new player this year, and I don't know what brought them together. But um, yeah, you again, you can feel that they're hungry and that they they want to try. And on, I'm, I'm maybe worried about SK in best of fives now. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they can bring it till the end. But um, I, I don't know. Their success has been like amazing to watch. And uh, congrats to Jesse's honestly on, on the work he's been doing backstage. Also, I, I know that I give a lot to. Uh, of credit to coaches mm -hmm. but um i mean coaches and structure as a whole but uh, i mean they're the ones uh, enabling the players to succeed in the end so and it's not easy to just i don't know assemble rookies and make them work together from the get-go so mm -hmm. i feel like he's got a yeah share of, of responsibility in that but yeah it's it's been great seeing them like this yeah in that sense i'm also uh, not sure how they're going to do in the best of fives, but yeah. during the regular split, they reminded me a bit of Mad Lions maybe last year. You have these, like all these, these individuals coming together and nobody yeah. really knew, oh, who are these guys, you know? And and then all of a sudden they're they're performing out there super well. Still finished sixth in the regular split, but I think they, they definitely surprised many people with, uh, with how they did. Um, now, rounding up and, and looking forward at the playoffs, obviously, um, we have... G2 versus Schalke uh, in the upper bracket, as well as Rogue versus Mad Lions. And in the lower bracket, we have Fnatic versus SK Gaming. Is there any series in particular you think is going to be extra interesting? Or are they all just like, okay, um, we're going to take them at face value, see what they give? Well, SK Fnatic is going to be very interesting, I feel. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like it's, it's going to be this kind of series where it takes a couple of games for Fnatic to just 
get in the mood and yeah, mm-hmm. get in the mood for playoffs. So yeah, I think this one is going to be close, maybe the closest. Um, I don't know. Um, G2, G2 Schalke, I, I really don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, I see G2 winning, obviously. Uh, same for Rogue against Mad Lion. So yeah, for the first week, I'm really interested into seeing Fnatic versus SK. Mm-hmm. And if I have to put you a bit on the spot and say what do you think would be the final rankings in terms of playoff standings? Who the first, second, third, fourth? Do you think Rogue um, has a serious chance against G2? They <laughs> oh. didn't win. They didn't win this split. And, uh, I mean, honestly, thinking about MVPs for this split, I was like, yeah, but it's hard to rank Rogue because they didn't beat G2. So mm-hmm. maybe in best of fives, but usually that's when G2 is stronger so yeah i still expect g2 to end first maybe rogue second uh mad lions though mad lions could really surprise us i I actually see them getting top three uh, same way they did for the regular season Mm -hmm. and then would be fnatic schalke and sk i think okay and why why do you think that mad lions is going to be able to top fnatic in the best fives because just earlier you said fnatic in best of fives is you know, a team that can pull it all together, or is it just yeah. you're you you've been impressed with Mad Lions? I've been very impressed with Mad Lions lately, especially Alioya. Uh, uh, I mean, they changed the whole top side of the map, which is like changing the whole synergy of the team because you mm-hmm. have a new jungler mm-hmm. working with a new top laner, and you have to link everything together. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they did it amazingly well. Uh, some of them struggled. I mean, I feel like besides Karzi, they all really improved. And yet again, I'm not saying that Karzi is underperforming, but it's mm-hmm. he's playing well enough for his team to be successful. So I, I don't know. I I'm expecting Malayans to see to be I don't know cr- creative in best of fives and just bring what they've been doing during the regular season even a step further. Mm-hmm. And I could see them beat Fnatic in the end. Okay, Laura, thank you so much for sharing your insights and um, how you've been doing so far in the spring split. I'm looking forward to seeing the interviews you're going to do in the the coming weekends and good luck with them. Thank you for the interview.